And good afternoon and welcome to Richardson Stadium in Kingston, Ontario. It's Queen's Homecoming and Gales football on OUA TV. I'm Bill Miklas along with me, Don Lewis. And a big game for the Gales in their final regular season home matchup as they host the Ravens. And a quick look at the standings, Donnie shows a Gales win today. They lock up first in the division, home field throughout the East Division playoffs. No word yet on who will host the Yates Cup, whether it'll be the East or the West Division. For Carlton, not only a chance to get out of that three-way tie in the loss column for second, but a chance to keep first place right in their sights. Exactly, Bill. And, uh, you know, just a reminder this year with the... the uh, change in the structure in the OU due to COVID this year. We, we've got quarter uh, semifinals in the OU East moving into uh, the OU uh, semifinal. So the Gales certainly hoping to have home field advantage for that. Uh, you know, key for the Gales is that this week they're facing the Ravens. Next week they go on the road to take on the GGs and then the GGs and the Ravens finish at the end of the year. And, and a that, quick, so quick look, uh, Donnie, as we saw a flash of them the gales keys to the game and really it's trying to take a, a load off of james keenan exactly last week I almost thought they were kind of going with the pass to set up the run you know in the end received tucker uh, creeped over 100 yards on the game had those two two cut uh two key touchdowns which keyed the win but the other thing we saw from keenan last week fumbled the ball once was picked off a couple of times, really needs to try and limit those mistakes. And then the other thing we saw in the first week matchup when the Gales were at Carleton is the pressure that they were able to get on the starting quarterback there, Tanner DeYoung. He was hurt in the York game, so really uh, I think it'll be key for the Gales, especially that front four, front seven, to be able to keep the pressure up on this uh, rookie uh, pivot for the Carleton Ravens. Gales won that season opening meeting up in Ottawa 18-6 to for the Ravens. A quick look shows they want to take a load off of their young quarterback, as you mentioned, uh, filling in for Tanner DeYoung. So Reed Van Conant came in uh, in the Panda game. They lost that game. They managed, they were able to win last week. And that, and then for him, uh, the ability for him to be able to spread the ball around, they've got sort of three key receivers, Gloden Mullally, Kasim Ferdinand, and Keaton Brugling are the real keys there. And then... For them on the defensive side is to be able to try and take away Rasheed Tucker, who has really keyed that Gales offense. And that James Keenan has had a solid year, but certainly when you take a look at the passing stats around the OU, Gales actually right near the bottom in terms of overall passing offense. And that's so it'll be key for them, take away the Gales strength in the ground game, force Keenan to then try and beat them through the air with the key injury this week for the Gales as well. Right, so no Richard Burton if you watched our game last Friday night. Burton hurt uh, in the late first half on a, a deep pass. Great catch, but it ended up at least costing him the rest of that game. And today, he will not dress. But basically, Donnie, getting back to those keys, you're saying Carlton needs to repeat the blueprint that Guelph may have showed the rest of the conference. Exactly. Now, I think one of the keys that Carlton does not have, that we were really key, keying on last week was A.J. Allen. And that, uh, you know, I think a really key defender for the for uh, the Guelph Griffins. And that, you know, Ravens coming in uh, to, the, to, to this afternoon's matchup defensively, kind of middle of the pack within the OU, fifth in points, fourth in yards allowed, fourth in yards allowed, fifth in rushing yards allowed. They've done a decent job, third uh, ranked defense in the OU this year against the pass. Last week, again, the Gales won a defensive struggle 14 to eight here at Richardson over Guelph on Friday night. That same day, Carlton came from behind, got a late field goal to beat Toronto 27-24. And you mentioned Rashid Tucker, his second straight week as the OUA player of the week, top rusher in the country. 
Exactly. And, you know, as we start to think down the line, starting to think about potential MVP candidates, you know, I know before he came on air, we're talking to somebody like A.J. Allen, uh, you know, maybe it's the top defensive player. You talk about Anthony Federico, maybe the top down lineman. He was starting to think, like, Rasheed Tucker has another big game this week. That would be three in a row, uh, potentially, as the offensive player of the week. How does the Queens offense replace Richard Burton? Well, you know, we're going to see a little bit more you know, action of them trying to spread it around. Uh, you know, certainly we saw Saki Aquamo had his best game of the season last week in the win over Toronto. Uh, AJ Chol has also done a good job at receiver this year. You know, I think as you're starting to go to some of those more secondary receivers, seeing somebody like Nathan Falcone, who had a tremendous reception on the near sideline last week, and then also somebody like Sebastian Hansen. So the Gales come in 4-0 and after today. They'll close out the regular season in the nation's capital next week at Ottawa. Carleton will close with a game with Ottawa next or in two weekends' time when the Gales will finally get their bye. There's a real chance if the Gales could win today that they could have a nice three weeks to relax. We're going to take a quick break. We're back with the kickoff after this. You're watching Gales football on OUA TV. If this replay will show it, yeah, it didn't, unfortunately. But Burton kept his eyes from looking. It's going to be a handoff to Tucker. Makes a move at the five. Touchdown! Rasheed Tucker, 351. Rose dropping back to pass. Throws it out far side, and it's intercepted by the Gales. Throwing into double coverage, making the pick for Queen. Ashton Miller, up to seven. Quamo in motion, has the kick block. Tucker up the middle, touchdown, Rasheed Tucker. Bill, what a great block that time by Quamo. It's a great ready to go here in the fourth quarter. Fake play action, fake throwing it far side, and it's picked off. Bernard, 25, up across the 30, and that delayed handoff. Ose tackled at the one yard line. Gales hold on. Carlton Ravens won the toss. They elected to defer, so they'll have the choice to start the second half. The Gales will get the ball to start things off. So we'll get to see the Gales offense and the nation's leading rusher, Rasheed Tucker. And a Ravens defense that really limited the Gales. It was a very close game that season opener, Donnie. Gales pulled away with 10 points in the fourth quarter. Well, you talk about uh, Tucker really as the leading ground gainer across the country right now is actually the arm of James Keenan in that week one matchup. Uh, long touchdown passes to Langwa and also to Richard Burton keyed that Gales victory. And then we really saw, you know, as we said uh, in our keys to the game, the impact that the Gales uh, defensive line were re really able to harass the uh, Carlton starting quarterback in that game, Tanner DeYoung. For Gales fans hoping they can do the same thing here this afternoon against Reed Van Conant. Look at the flags at Richardson. Show a bit of a sideway across the field wind. Maybe a bit going into the face of the Ravens to start this one. As they'll kick from the right of your screen as you take a look at the, the flags I mentioned here at Richardson Stadium. It will be... Brandon Forcier to kick it off for Carlton in their road white with the black helmets. The Gales on this homecoming Saturday in Kingston. Nolan Bedard, one of the men back to return for the tricolor. They'll wait for the referee, Chris Venter, to start things with his whistle. And the Gales' final regular season home game is underway high short kick bedard takes it straight ahead gets a good block straight up and he'll fly towards the 35 they'll spot him right at the 35 and out comes the gales offense of course led by the nation's leading runner and back-to-back -back oua offensive player of the week in rashid tucker 
Quarterback is James Keenan. Sam Sinos is in the backfield as well. Receivers Falcone and Cuemo in the slot. Joel and Hansen, the wide receivers, on first and ten. Gales out of the gun. Keenan keeps, looked in the flat, no one there. Now he'll go a little deeper and way behind Cuemo, the offensive line for the Gales. Jacob Butler and Jax Kara are the tackles. Evan Florin and Josh Mosley are the guards. And Ryan Berta is the center on the defense for Carlton up front. It's Ife Onieka, Cedric Tirio, Nathan Clark, and Arnold Mbemba. We'll get to the rest of the Carlton defense after this play on second and 10. Keenan under pressure, steps up, looks over the middle, dropped. It was in the hands of Hanson, but he looked to run first. And Carlton gets a two and out. Their linebackers, Labarge Chung, Kirme, and Kavanaugh are the linebackers. Laveau and Edward are the DBs. O'Dane, Levine, and Hepburn is the safety. Nick Liberator to punt it away. One back for the Carlton return. They don't really come after it, and Libertor gets a good kick, but taken, and getting to the outside is Ferdinand, and Ferdinand gets a great return into Gale's territory. Inside the 45 to the 43, but we have a flag back where he got to the outside. I believe it's gonna be a block in the back as the Carlton offense will come out and start further back than they had hoped. And as we talked about in the opening, they'll start Reed Van Conant at quarterback. We talk a lot about Rashid Tucker, but Nathan Carter, their starting tailback, is just 51 yards away from 3,000 yards in his career. Mitch Raper is the fullback. Mulali Guist are the receivers, the slotbacks Ferdinand and Brugeling. We'll get to the line after this play. Motion comes to the left. Van Conant to Carter. Carter got slowed down. We'll end up with four, but Anthony Federico with a handout to slow down Carter. That offensive line for Carlton. Patrick Lavoie and Jesse Lawson are the tackles. Lavalie and Tamming the guards. And O'Mara is the center. The Gales defense up front. Federico, Newell, Johnson who made that grab. I mentioned it was Federico, it was Johnson. Wishart are up front. We'll get to linebackers and DBs after this play. Second and six. Van Conant's looking deep. He's got a man. Incomplete. Good coverage by the Gales. Aiden Vint stride for stride with Kalik Johnson and it's third down and a two and out for the Ravens offense. The Gales linebackers, Bedard, K Walter Carabin, and Josh McBain, the secondary, the corners, McCallum, and East, Vanek, Martin are the DBs, and the safety, Kelowna. And the punter for Carlton is Vincent Ploof, who with this punt will get to more than 4,000 for his career. Bit of a high snap. Not a great punt to crack the 4,000 barrier, but it's out of bounds. So a good net, they'll spot it at the Gales 40. And as we saw last week against the Guelph Griffins, the Gales starting a little bit uh, more so through the air with a couple of pass plays. The unfortunate drop by Hansen there. Expect to see them start to get the ball into Tucker's hands. For the Gales on defense, they did not see Nathan Carter in that first week. And uh, for Nathan Carter, as you mentioned, he has a chance to go over the 3,000-yard mark and has already become the all-time rushing leader for the Carlton Ravens as well. Play action fake. Quick hitter. Caught. 
And getting a first first down of the game is Ben Langlois. 11 yard gain and the Gales will move the sticks. Langwa finding some room in that underneath zone there and holding onto the ball. Nice toss that time by Keenan as well. First and 10, three passes so far on the first three offensive plays by the Gales. Here's Tucker, he gets hit at the line, maybe fought for a couple. It'll be second and long. Cedric Terrio from his defensive tackle position fighting off the block of Josh Bosley to be able to limit Tucker to a short gain. And you know, Donnie, with each week that passes, Rashid Tucker is being more and more keyed on by opposing defenses. Second and eight, as they gave Tucker two on the first down carry. Ravens show blitz, drop out of it. Keenan with time into the flat, low. Quamo couldn't make the catch. Labarge Chung was there on coverage. And it's another two and out for the Gales. And not unlike what we saw for Queens in that first week matchup against Carleton up in Ottawa, started off a little bit slowly before getting things unleashed in the second quarter in that game. Man in the backfield. Runs up to the line of scrimmage. Liberator looking for the sideline. Nice play by Ferdinand to come up and catch that on the run. He'll draw a no yards penalty. See if it's 15 or five. Should be 15. Given that he caught it in the air. And as you said, a good play to judge that short punt and get quickly upfield underneath it. They're saying that the no yards cut will be was at the 35, so Ferdinand won't get the return, but the Ravens will get great field position. They'll start their second possession of this game at their 50-yard line. Van Cohen at 13 to 33, 228 yards, three touchdowns to yet to throw for an interception in his first two games as the Ravens pivot. He's in the gun, two running backs, he'll fire, Long throw to Kalik Johnson, and he'll have close to, and does, the first Carlton first down. So both teams start with a two and out on their first series, get a first down on the first play of their second series. And the Ravens, the first team to get into the other side's half of the field as they're at the Gales 49. Only one back in the backfield with Van Conan. It's Carter, he'll take the handoff, get stacked up at the line of scrimmage. He'll get two. And Bill, one thing with the different format for the OU this year, the Gales, of course, this is the second time they face the Ravens. We were talking before the game, as we start to look forward to the playoffs, there's a good chance that they would have to face one of these teams at least three times uh, during the season as they, as they move through. Second and eight for the Ravens. Van Conant got the play late. Time clock's running down on him. Gets the snap just in time. Play action fake, rolling to his right. Looks deep, and it'll go out of bounds. He was under pressure, but again, it took a while for that play to come into him. And as a result, it's third down, and out comes the pick punting unit for Carlton, and both teams have mirrored each other on their first two offensive series. But the Ravens with a chance to switch the field position. Plouffe stands just inside his 50. Bedard shielding the sun that's come out. Good punt by Plouffe. And Bedard makes the catch at a six, but couldn't stay in bounds. And that's where the Gales will start this possession. Chris Ventor, as I said, is our referee. Andre Papineau is the umpire. Ryan Mickleborough is the deep judge. Chris Walker, the line judge. Vito Corrali is the side judge. Dave Potitz 
is the back judge, and Keith Medeiros is our field judge. Gales deep in their own end of the field. First and 10, Keenan. Bit of a low snap, hands off to Tucker. Tucker weaves his way up close to the 15. It'll be a gain of eight, second and short One of the, for the things, Gales. Sorry, Bill, one of the things that's been really key this year for Rashid Tucker is just his vision running through the hole. That play initially designed to go right up the middle, then he bounces it outside off the right tackle, Jazz Kara. Ravens look like they might send a couple of linebackers here on second and two. Tucker again up the middle and moves the pile. He'll get close to the 20. It's enough for a first down. Gales quickly to the line. Tucker a third straight run, but this time he won't get by number 99. And and of course the announcer nightmare. And that was Trey O'Brien. It's actually number 98. Second and long, Gales. Keenan, good pocket, but a high throw intended for Josh McLeod, but way over his head. And the Gales will be forced to punt. Uh, he did have Saki Aquamo a couple times open on that. He had him open short early, and then as he was forced to take a further look downfield, Aquamo was open just at the yardstick. Unfortunately, the ball falling over the head of McLeod, and just halfway through the first quarter, Liberatore on for his third punt of the game already. Stands inside his 10, Ferdinand close to his 50. And Liberatore hangs up in the wind. Ferdinand waits for the blockers. Gale slipped, but Ferdinand will get stacked up, but he fumbled, but then a whistle. Carlton had fallen on it anyways, so it'll stay Ravens' ball. First and 10 from their 54. The Bears' chunk falling on that fumble. Out of town this afternoon, Laurier up 22 to nothing over Mack in the fourth quarter. 16 to two for Toronto over York. Conan. Carter with him in the backfield. High snap. And that threw off the timing of that play. And a big tackle by the Gales. It's a loss of three. The Gales might have been a little lucky to get away with no flag there because it did look like Walter Carabin stood over Carter to say a little something. Also out of town in the fourth quarter, Mustangs up big on the Windsor Lancers, 40 to four in London. Guelph and Waterloo are later. Now things starting to shape up in both divisions. On second and 10, wide open Ferdinand for a first down and well delivered by Van Conan. A little bit of a mix up in the zone coverage that time as he was able to get the ball over the head of Bedard and then Stefan East unable to come up from his Boundary corner position. And I think the ball got kicked, so they'll reset it at the Gales 43, first and 10. Carlton. Johnson comes wide to the left, Ferdinand wide to the right. Carter takes the handoff, and he'll get a couple. Big hit by Bedard coming up from his linebacker spot. They'll give him three, so second and seven, Carlton.
And Conan, quick release, caught, and close to a first down. We'll wait for the bodies to unpile, and it's number 89, and that's Keaton Bruckling, and they're going to measure. One thing we saw last week with Guelph when they had to go to the backup quarterback struggled struggled a little bit in, tr in getting the ball away quickly. Van Conant so far here, early in the four in the uh, in the first quarter here is certainly doing that because that, you know, and, and again we've seen that sometimes if there's a high snap that throws off the timing, but he's getting the ball to his receivers quickly downfield, not allowing the Gales to come up and break up those pass plays. And a neat matchup here between coaches we talked about Ryan Beckmanis and Ryan Sheehan the head coach of Guelph last week former teammates here at Queens and young assistant coaches under Pat Sheehan but now Beckmanis as the defense coordinator of the Gales goes against a head coach he worked under before coming back to Queens in the defense coordinator spot in Carleton head coach Steve Samerja it is a first down for the Ravens. Ball spotted at the Gales 33. Crowd starting to try and spur on their defense. Play action fake. Van Conant wants to go deep, throws it away as he was under pressure. Good coverage by Aiden Vint again because he wanted to go to Johnson deep and had to bring it down and then the pressure got to him. Well that time the Gales coming with the blitz. Ethan Mar Martin coming up from his defensive back position and he was coming off the right side of the defense there along with Owen Stewart able to get tremendous pressure on Van Conant. Second and 10. Forcia was making 40 yarders towards this end in warm up. So they're in his range. Van Conant would like to get them closer at least. Picked off! Vint with a great break on the ball, intended for Johnson, and the Gales get a turnover. Vint with his start, first start of the season, his first pickoff of the season, and that time Van Conant just simply threw in a double coverage. And that Vint. All the way through there was the most likely man to come away with that ball. It was actually McCallum. Yep. The Gales have two 22s listed on the roster that we were provided, but it's actually Thompson McCallum with the interception. And we get a break here and a chance to catch our breath with 346, the time left first quarter. Again, a Gales win, and they lock up first place in the East Division of the OUA. Would have home field advantage till at least the Yates Cup Final. Still no word from the OUA who will host the Yates Cup this year, whether it'll be the West Division champion or the East Division champion. For the Ravens, a win would keep first place within their sights as they have a game in hand, or sorry, one game left with Ottawa. Ottawa is hoping, and Toronto, for, law, for a win by Carleton because that would keep them within striking division, of striking distance of first place. The Gigi's on the bye this week, Carleton on the bye next, and then the Gales finishing with the bye in the final week of the OU regular season. So for McCallum, that's his first interception as well. He's had a fumble recovery er earlier in the season. And the Ravens certainly going after him or keying on him in this first quarter. 
as yeah. it does seem that the Gales are putting specific corners on specific receivers, as it's been McCallum on Johnson most of the time. So out of the timeout, Gales first and 10 after the turnover. Play action fake. Keenan still can't find anybody. He'll tuck and he'll get out of bounds close to the first down. O'Brien was on the chase, but there's the elusiveness of the Gales starting quarterback. Picks up close to first down yardage and in that first weekend matchup up in Ottawa, ran the ball nine times for 39 yards in that game. Second and short, maybe a yard left to go. Plenty of time on the play clock. Tucker will take the handoff and gets hit over the 30, gets to the 32, should be enough for the first down. Seen that a couple times. They're bringing Quamo and mate in motion. As we see here on the replay, you see Quamo coming from the far side, kicking out the linebacker and giving Tucker the hole that he needed to get upfield for the first down. Lee Malone, Xavier Lee Malone with the tackle for Carlton. First and 10 Gales, ball spotted at their 32. Again, the Ravens showing blitz. Tucker weaves his way, still Tucker, and he got tripped by the 40 yard line. They'll spot him close to another first down. It'll be a gain of nine. And we mentioned it earlier in the game, it's just the vision of Rashid Tucker and the patience as you see as he goes through the hole here, kicks it outside, and then unfortunately the 40 yard line tripped him up. He may well have been gone. So second and one as the Gales get some momentum here offensively. Tucker again. And again, he's got a first down as he gets to the Gales 45. And that time you saw a little bit of the, a little bit of the strength of Tucker running into the tackle of D Darren Kyrame and able to run over him and then get up to the 45. Play, fakes to Tucker, wants to go deep, instead over the middle, and it's too high for Langlois. You knew it was coming with so many runs to Tucker, Donnie. They wanted to go deep to Cuomo. And that time the ball just slipped uh, a little high on the play. One of the things that's let folks know, if uh, just tuning in now, it was raining heavily throughout the morning, so expect the field to be a little bit slick. Oh, it's not like the old Richardson Stadium, which was grass and would look like a quagmire by the second half after rainfall like that. Keenan wide open. And for a first down is Sebastian Hansen. Great protection by the line. Allowed that slow crossing play to get open. And Keenan going probably to about a second or third read here. As you see, looks left, looks deep, and then comes back underneath with Hansen with the drag route across the middle underneath the linebacker zone. First time for the Gales into the Ravens end of the field. Anthony Souls checks in to give Rasheed Tucker a bit of a break. And this time, the Ravens jump again, but they cross the line of scrimmage, or did the Gales jump? I think Evan Florin, the Gales left guard, was moving. It is. Before the snap. It's a big penalty on the Gales. As they're trying to cause those jumps by the defense. So it'll be first and 15 from the midfield stripe. 20 seconds and counting left in this opening quarter. Scoreless on Gale's homecoming. Handoff is to Souls, and he just gets back to the line of scrimmage. And that is Anthony Soule's first carry as a Gale, as we see Tucker checking back in on second down here. Nathan Falcone will check in as well. The Gales will add a receiver on second and 10, second and 15, sorry. It's 
Ravens might have been offside, no flag. Now there's a flag across the way. Keenan dumps it off short. Hansen gets drilled out of bounds, but I think that was a clean hit by LaBode. Look at the medley, Joseph, outside linebacker for the Ravens across the line early on the play. Oh. And indeed, that's the initial signal. So we have zeros on the clock for the opening quarter, but this should be allow for one more play because the Gales will probably take the penalty. The one of the downs box took the worst of that hit and we'll need some repair, so we'll have a delay. So it's back to second and 10. And there'll be one play left barring another penalty in this first quarter. But we've still got Sorry about those technical difficulties. Didn't miss much. One play to end the quarter. It was an incomplete pass on a screen pass attempt to Rasheed Tucker. A little too high for him. Might have gone for enough for the first down, but nonetheless, Gales are third and ten and will punt it away, but they do get the ball into Carlton territory. And Liberator stands at his 41. Ravens don't come after it. It's not a particularly deep punt, but again, we'll find the sideline. And they'll spot it out of bounds at the Raven 22. And that's where Carlton will start, first and 10. Their last drive ending in the interception by Van Conan. And we saw that last week, Donnie, with the Guelph quarterback staring down their receivers. Exactly, Van Conan in that first quarter, three of seven for 34 in the interception by McCallum. Nathan Carter in that first quarter, just six yards on four carries for the Ravens. And a little bit of a delay getting the yard markers down. Yard six down. Well, I don't think they're in the right spot nice. unless. And of course, the crowd is pointing that out to the official who hasn't. Yeah, if they have that sliding <laughs> disc, they mark on the one of the five yard marks, and then I think they got to slide them back a couple yards here. Well. Now their disc is out by two yards. Anyway. Back to the game, thankfully. No more yardstick talk. Van Conan. Out of the gun. Hand off. And not getting back to the line of scrimmage is Joshua Ferguson. And again, the Gales all over the run of the Carlton Ravens. And this is not necessarily what we saw in that first week matchup. Um, Freud Cesar was the starting running back, had a decent game in that game, rushing the ball for the Ravens. The, the uh, Gales in that game defensively did a great job with the pass rush. So far this afternoon, really limiting this Ravens ground game. So Ferguson will stay in at running back. Much more imposing figure than Carter. Keenan, or Van Conan, and he'll go down. Guess who? Anthony Federico on second and long, and the Ravens will punt from deep in their own end. Take a look at the replay here. The Ravens trying to go uh, with Lawson and Tamming, and you can see the job that Federico does. Steps inside, rips through that double team, and then wraps up Van Conan for his first sack of this afternoon. And Federico now up to 
seven sacks on the season for the Gales. And Plouffe will stand at his one, see if Carlton gives up the safety here. And that seems to be the signal coming from the sideline. And that is what Plouffe will do. He'll run around and waste a little bit of time, but the Gales have the first points of the afternoon and they'll come on a safety early in this second quarter and the Gales will decide whether they want to kick off from the Ravens 35 or start at their own 35 first and 10. That first quarter, the Ravens shut out for the first time in the first quarter this season. They had scored a field goal against the Gales in the season opener and had at least a touchdown in their other three games as the Gales will take it at their 35, but today they don't get on the board in the first. And the second quarter has not been kind to the Ravens. They've been outscored in the second quarter in three of their four matchups. Only when they posted York did they outscore the Lions seven to nothing, as again, the chain gang is having some struggle. For the Gales in the first quarter, Keenan two of eight for 26 yards through the air. Rashid Tucker, seven carries for 33 yards as he tries to go for a three-peat as OU Offensive Player of the Week. One final out of town this afternoon, Laurier going into Hamilton and winning 22 to nothing over the McMaster Marauders. So Laurier moving to two and two, but Mac falling to one and three in the OU West. And the Marauders lost last week at Windsor. Lancers come crashing back down to reality and a trip to London to face the Western Ontario Mustangs has a tendency to do that to teams to the tune of 54 to four as the clock winds down in London with the Mustangs moving to the top of the OU West standings at three and one. Windsor now at two and two. And next for the Mustangs will be the Waterloo Warriors. Again, blitz shown by the Ravens. Keenan fires, caught by Falcone. And Falcone's over the 45. They'll spot them over the 46. It's another Gales first down. Nice out route that time by, by Falcone. And some soft coverage in the secondary by the Ravens. Falcone able to secure the ball, move up field before he's finally tackled by Xavier Lee Malone. And what's the flag here for? So the Gales get called for too many men in the formation and Steve Snyder, Gales head coach, is hot on the Queen's sideline. So it'll be first and 15 now for the Gales. Second penalty, this, sorry, third penalty this afternoon for 25 yards against the Gales. Blitz coming and Tucker will lose a yard, maybe two, actually make it three, as they'll spot it at the 39, and it'll be second and 13 for Queens. Gale's unable to get any push off the right side of the offensive line that time. Credit the Ravens' defensive line getting some pressure and forcing Tucker back. Keenan. Screen to Tucker. Tucker makes one move but can't beat the rest of the Ravens. He'll get to the 45, but it will be third and, he, third and 12. And the Gales will be forced to punt after what looked like might be a promising drive. As we see the replay here on the screen, and I think it's Lee Malone read that, and actually coming from the back was Cedric Terriel read that at the line it was a soft offensive block, caught back downfield to tackle Tucker before he was able to pick up first down yardage. Low 
snap. Libertor gets away a beautiful punt. Ferdinand waits for it at his 20. And won't go much further. Great coverage by the Gales. We see the Gales fifth-year punter, Nick Libertor, getting off his best punt of this afternoon. His last couple had kind of wobbled when he's kicking the ball to the, the, ball to the right. Able to pick up the low snap. And then tremendous downfield coverage by the Gales on special teams that time. As we see the replay here, Ferdinand trying to make a couple of moves, but downfield quickly for the Gales, Kelowna and McCallum limiting him and actually probably pushing him back a couple yards on the return that time. So we saw the Gales at this end of the field much of the first quarter, now it's the Ravens. Approaching four minutes gone in this second quarter, Gales leading two nothing. Van Conan, quick drop, high pass, and too high for Gloden Mullally. Mullally has been the leading receiver for the Ravens coming into this game, and that's the first time that they've thrown his way, but again, we've seen the ball sail a little bit, not necessarily a tight spiral coming out of Van Conan's hands. Second and 10, Ravens from their 20. Van Conan, back to pass, blitz picked up, long throw and misses Brugling. And the Ravens will be forced to punt from deep in their own end again. See if they give up another safety. It would be unconventional here because you would imagine Plouffe's gonna stand at his fives, but if you're playing field position with the way the defense is playing so far for Carlton, Donnie, would you give up to? I you know, Plouffe has done a decent job punting the ball. I guess the answer might come after this next Gales <laughs> offensive drive as to whether or not it was a good decision or not. Hope that limb doesn't break on you there, Donnie. And it is punted away, end over end. Bedard should get a return out of it. But good work by the first man down, Jonathan Edward, who slowed Bedard down enough Gales will start in Carlton territory at the 53, but that could have been better. Out of town, Toronto has won the first Battle of Toronto, winning 25 to two over the York Lions. But that means in essence for the Carlton Ravens from a playoff perspective is that if they're able to come back and win this afternoon, then that would clinch a playoff spot in the OU East for Carlton. Pass complete to Langwa. It's a pickup of six. Make it second and four. And for the Lions, they will now have to win out and get help if they want to get one of those four playoff spots in the East Division. Next week, the Lions take on McMaster, who have lost their last three, and then they finish the season at home to Toronto. Or Stefan Potasic's crew will be in wonderful spirits for that trip to York. Tucker will not get the first down. Didn't even get to the Carlton 45. Good work by the Ravens defense. And the Gales aren't hesitating. They're going to go for it on third and a good two. Well, it's a little bit outside. Yep, now they're going to bring the punting unit on. When we're talking about Libertor in terms of field goals, his longest year is from the 42 yard line. Well, in this wind, I think. You're winning, you're winning the field position battle right now, Donnie, this seems like the right call. Certainly, and expect, uh, you know, if he has a punt like he had the last time, he's gonna pin the Ravens offense back probably inside their 10 or 15 yard line. See if Ferdinand tries to field this in his end zone because again that would if he fields it in the end zone runs it out then the Ravens would get the ball at the 20. So Liberator is going to look for that sideline I'm sure. And he's already sort of turned his body toward 
towards the right sideline. He's going to aim for that sideline. It's a great punt. And Ferdinand caught it at the one. You can't punt it any better than that. What a beautiful 44 and a half yard punt that time by Nick Libertor. And this is where the Gales bonded defensive line. As we see the replay there, Bill, that, that's a play where, you know, let it bounce in the end zone. Where, well, where comes? I, I, was I was going to say, Donnie, sorry to interrupt you. It was a tough one because I don't know where that was going to go out of bounds. Right, but either it's going to go out of bounds at that point or, you know, b good, better case for the Ravens, it bounces into the end well, zone and then you get, get the I ball I think it was field, going out of bounds. Point. No question. I think Ferdinand was thinking, I'm going to catch it and maybe get a couple of yards. Good run here by Ferguson. He'll get four on the play. So that's a good first down play. But more a pressing question for Carlton is where is Nathan Carter? Carter again holding the career rushing record for the Ravens. Broke the record that Mark Brown had back from 1988. And I see him on the sideline. Seems to be standing beside his coaches, so it doesn't seem to be an injury issue right now. Second and six, high snap. Ferguson again. A little bit of dancing for just two yards. So the Gales may be getting another safety. Wisher coming up to make the tackle, but the safe is sorry, the center, Angus O'Meara. You see again a really high snap. Federico there with the initial pressure really throws off the timing of that running play. So, Bill, yes, definitely I would concede <laughs> safety on this one. <laughs> and that's the top-notch analyst <laughs> work you'll get here when you watch Gales football on OUA TV. Shots on goal here midway through the second quarter with the Gales looking to double their lead to 4-0. Loof's going to run this play clock right down to the bitter end, and then he is going to, not gracefully, but he'll get out of bounds at the back of the end zone. And the Gales are up 4 nothing now. Bill, we talked earlier, and we certainly heard uh, some of uh, Gales head coach Steve Snyder's comments earlier this week. You know, but when you're facing a team for the second time, he's used to that from his St. FX days. And that, but you know, he also talked about the fact that you want to try and change things up a little bit. And uh, you know, the Ravens have been forced to change things up with the move from uh, from Tanner DeYoung to Van Conant. And that, uh, you know, but the Gales right now, not necessarily seeing. I, I think defensively, we've seen another strong performance. But you know, offensively, right now, is still trying to get that passing game going that they had more so in the first quarter. And maybe a little bit of a change on this second safety, they're going to force the Ravens to punt the ball. Or sorry, to uh, to kick the ball to them. So it will be a kickoff from the Ravens 35, as Donnie mentioned. So Forcier will kick to Bedard. And Noah Gross, who are back for the Gales. 7.06 time left in the first half. Bill Miklas, Don Lewis. Homecoming Saturday here in Kingston at Richardson Stadium. The 4-0 Queens Gales hosting the 2-2 two two Carlton Ravens. Gales leading right now 4-0. And Forcier hangs it up. And it bounces and is scooped up at the 30 by Gross. As they kept it away from Bedard. Nice kickoff by the Ravens and the Gales will start at their 30. In fact, well, no, they'll spot it at the 32, but it's still three yards further back than where they could have started if they took the ball at the 35. So you gotta consider that a win for the Carlton Ravens special team. Noah Gross in there in place of Richard Burton again injured for this game. Keenan. Tucker beside him in the backfield. Play action fake. Keenan with time over the middle. Has Joel 
Chole just dragged down. And I think they're gonna call a horse collar on Chatelaine Levine. Cedric Chatelaine Levine kept Chole from getting a touchdown, but he did it with a horse collar. Keenan timed the pass, sees Chole open downfield on that post route and almost running right to the post in the end zone. I don't know if that's a horse collar though, Donnie. I'd love to see the oh. replay again. Looked like he grabbed the shirt at the shoulder I pad. was just going to say that ex exact point there as well as we see the call now from the officials. Indeed, it is going to be the horse collar, though. Wow, I thought maybe another official might come in. See, he grabs the sleeve of the shirt, Donnie. Yeah. That's not a horse collar. Now, I mean, I, it's I dangerous. What it did do, you saw a little bit yes. of the body jerk back. And that I, might I agree That's often that, what the officials are looking for. I Yep. Under the letter of the law for that rule, it's supposed to be at the number. But Gales will take the break. It now moves the ball inside the Carlton 30 to the 27. A little bit of a pick play there by the Gales as they'll complete it to Josh McLeod for a gain of four. It'll be second and six, Queens. Cloud's first catch of this afternoon. But penalty or not, as you said, Tony, that was just a beautiful pass by James Keenan, his best throw of the day. Second and six, blitz coming. Keenan gets away, has room, has a man, and overthrew Falcone. But it actually ended up almost being a catch for Hansen, but it's incomplete. Well, and Louis Laveau, I think, gets away with a little bit of early contact as, as the defensive back on this play. Keenan, I thought, probably had room to scramble yeah, for I it downfield so to pick up the first down yardage as we take a look at the replay once again here. Uh, it was either early or it was perfect timing that time from Laveau to break up that pass play. But more important for the Gales, not getting sacked, Keenan allows Liberatore to attempt a 30-yard field goal from three the right hash. Three of five coming into this week's action. And the kick is up, and the kick is good. Nick Liberatore makes it 7 nothing Gales with 5.20 left in the first half. And the woes for Carlton in this second quarter this season continue. They've been outscored 21 to 10 coming into today. Now chalk up another another seven points by the Gales. It's 28 to 10. In second quarters through four and almost four and a half games. Ben Conan, play action fake to Carter, who's back in, and another high throw to Ferdinand. Ben Conan struggling here in the second quarter, three of 10 for 34 yards, and when you factor in those yards lost on the two safeties conceded, just 16 yards in total offense with just over five minutes to go here in the second quarter this afternoon for the Ravens. The other two quarterbacks dressed today for Carlton are Tristan Rinaldi and Tim Jesse, I don't think they're in a pull Reed Van Conant spot yet, but he's definitely rushing some throws on second and 10. Looks to his right, fires, almost picked, and ends up being a completion to Johnson. It'll be short of the first down by a yard. See if Carlton goes for it. Johnson had to slide down to catch that ball. So he wasn't able to get upfield and continue with it. And I'll tell you, good work by Johnson not to give up on that play. And I guess the question is, who was that supposed to originally go to? I'm sure Van Conan will say it went to the receiver I was aiming to. Is this in, in the area, Bill, where you might go for a fake? Well, you're certainly going to try and draw him offside on third and one. But yes, could be a fake, but it's not. Plouffe gets away a great punt, and Bedard has to let it bounce, but it bounces backwards. Looked like it hit a Raven, 
There will be no yards against Carlton. And Plouffe sprinting downfield because, of course, he can fall on the ball and to recover it, but it'll be the five-yard variety I would expect here, Bill. I would imagine two. And it is, so it was not called on the punter. So 3.57 time left in a defensive battle here in the first half, much the same way as last Friday night against Guelph. Keenan played out of the shotgun all game so far. Hand off to Tucker. Tucker trying to bounce it to the outside. He'll get there. He'll get hit at the 40, but it's going to be sorry, the 35, it'll be a gain of four, second and six. On the replay here, you'll see Xavier Lee Malone comes off his block, at least able to string it out and force Tucker out wide. And As we're mentioning his name a lot, Donnie, on running plays with Tucker, and you wonder if he's a, almost designated as a spy on the Gales' star running back. Second and six, Keenan. Time over the middle, wide open is Hansen for a first down. Sorry, Ben Langwa for a first down over the 50 to the 51. Let's credit the Gales offensive line. Uh, not necessarily a ton of yardage on the ground so far this afternoon, but again, tremendous time for Keenan as you see him come off to about his third read there at that time, finding Langwa wide open over the middle in the, in the intermediate zone. Three minute warning given by referee Venter. 2.58 is the exact time and running on the first half clock. Gales from their 51. Keenan, Langwa, Langwa hit, gets to midfield. See if they spot him on the Carlton side. It will, the ball will just be on the Carlton side of the midfield stripe, second and seven. See, quick pass play. Cuomo out there blocking along with a couple of the Gales offensive linemen trying to get downfield quickly. Keenan. Tucker, good job picking up the blitz. And Cuomo's got the catch inside the Carlton 45 to the 42. Another Gales first down. Keenan again just picking apart the Ravens zone scheme here on defense. But again, having time to make those timing throws and get them complete downfield. Keenan to throw again, pump fake, still with time. Now he's going deep, wide open for the touchdown is Sebastian Hansen. A mix-up in the secondary, and the Gales have the game's first touchdown. You're just hoping for Keenan's sake that he was going to get rid of the ball. As you'll see on the play here, there's pressure coming from the back side, and not necessarily the tightest spiral, but a simple breakdown in the defensive secondary for the Ravens as nobody within about 15 yards of Sebastian Hansen. He might have dropped the first pass of this afternoon, but he catches the latest one and gets his first touchdown of the season as a Gale. Liberatory to try and add the extra point. And he does. And the Gales with 2.03 left in the first half lead 14 to nothing. It was Cedric Terrio that was a split second away from sacking James Keenan. Instead, Keenan gets rid of the ball and the Gales get a 42-yard touchdown pass to Sebastian Hansen. And one thing, when we're talking about the differences we thought we might see from the first week to this week, one of the things that's really impressing me is the job that James Keenan is doing. Yes, that was a long pass play, and you know, really we saw in the first game against the Ravens, it was two long pass plays to Langwa and uh, Richard Burton, but this time it's a lot of those shorter to intermediate routes that he's taking what the defense is giving him, especially here in the second quarter, and then able to string some drives together now to pick up points here in the last couple possessions. 
Ravens have both their timeouts left. Ferguson and Ferdinand are back deep to return this kickoff for the visitors as liberatory tees it up on the right hash. Two safeties, a liberatory 30-yard field goal, and now the 42-yard touchdown pass from Keenan to Hansen, and the Gales lead 14-0. Carlton will more than likely take the ball to start the second half as it's their choice. So it's important for the visitors, Donnie, to try and get something from this possession here, which might be their last of the first half. Again, so far, just 25 yards in total offense in the first half. Yes, they've given up probably about 20 yards and losses on those two safety plays, but even with that, really credit the Gales defense shutting down the run so far this afternoon and then limiting Van Conant through the air, just 43 yards passing. Liberatory hits it towards Ferdinand. Ferdinand straight ahead. And he'll be brought down over the 20 at about the 22. And that's where the Ravens will start this offensive series. Nice kick, I thought, that time by Nick Liberatory. Actually puts it just outside the numbers, so he's really limiting the options that Ferdinand has for getting return upfield. And then... The Gale's able to pin them inside the 25 here. They actually spot the ball at the 23. And, and you talked about the Ravens having the two timeouts. The Gales still have their two timeouts. If they can stop them here, would have a chance to try and add to their lead. They do. Van Conant. It's a big first down play with Carter beside him. The Ravens are way offside. Brugling did not time his run at receiver with the snap count. And so now it'll be first and 15. And Brugling in the first weekend matchup, 16, sorry, six receptions, 109 yards, just one here this afternoon, good for seven yards. I think they're trying to get the clock sorted out here as it had started to wind. Five seven is what it's put back to. Van Conan. Looks, fires, picked off. Bedard read his eyes, and that's as easy as it gets. Bill, you mentioned that er earlier in the game on the McCallum interception, is that Brugling, and often we'll see this with a, with a rookie quarterback, is simply telegraphing where the pass is going. Bedard has read that book a couple times before, jumps in front of the intended receiver, and now the Gales have tremendous field position here. It was nothing, nothing for a good chunk of this first half, and now the Gales trying to extend their lead even more. Keenan. Carlton needs a stand here by their defense, or this one could get away from them by halftime. Tucker bounces off one tackle, breaks another. It's a lot of work for three yards, but it'll be second and seven for the Gales. Jaden Washington, the Gales age back on the play. Tucker bumps into him, but then able to spin off and get upfield to get some yardage here on first down. Again, Tucker coming in back-to-back -back weeks as the OUA Offensive Player of the Week. And the Gales will use a timeout. Uh, Steve Snyder could see there was a mix-up. It looked like Tucker was talking to Keenan. And with the play clock running down, Steve
Steve Snyder uses one of his timeouts. And Falcone will come in for Washington. It will be second. They actually only gave Tucker two on that last carry. So it's second and eight. Let's credit this Ravens defense, rush defense anyway, limiting Rasheed Tucker to just 37 yards here in the first half. However, it's been James Keenan starting to get the ball going through the air, 11 of 18 for 164. And you would have to expect, Donnie, if the Gales are going to go far in November, that James, it's going to be on the arm of James Keenan because you would expect come playoff time, defenses are going to key. We're starting to see it already on shutting down Rasheed Tucker. And I think we go back to one of the keys we talked about off the top of the game is getting more balance because they haven't, you know, they're the lowest ranked passing offense, but that's because they've had such a great ground, ground game with Tucker this year. Keenan, second and eight, time, fires, caught by Cuomo, touchdown Gales! He's done it with touch and now he drills one into Saka Cuomo. And again, let's credit the job of the Gales offensive line as we take a look at the replay here. Keenan steps back and Cuomo ran a little out and then back up and in. And he's able to get the ball over the head of the linebacker on the play, Xavier Lee Malone. And the second pass touchdown on the last two drives for Keenan. And Liberatore puts through the extra point. And in 28 seconds, the Gales take the Bedard interception and turn it into a touchdown. And the Gales now lead 21 to nothing with 89 seconds left in the first half. Nice reception on that play that time by Satya Cuomo. And, you know, let's credit the job that Cuomo does. You know, has decent uh, receiving uh, yard, receiving stats this year for the Gales, but they also often use Quamo in that sort of trap block when they're uh, trying to get Tucker open through some of those holes at the line of scrimmage. So does a great job blocking, had a great job blocking downfield on a Hanson reception earlier in the game, and then a tremendous reception there that time for the touchdown. Well, and there was heat on that throw from Keenan. And as you said, Cuomo turning his body in the air, making the catch, controlling it when he landed. And it's a touchdown. And now the Ravens with their second turnover of the game in a hole. Ferdinand from his goal line. Fumbled and the Gales have it. And the Ravens if we could see this on the replay, what a tremendous play by Connor Burtonshaw. Comes down, gets rid of the block by the Ravens up back, and then pops Ferdinand on the play here. As we see Burtonshaw coming off, tremendous block, gets his shoulder in on the right arm of Ferdinand there, and two turnovers here in the last two minutes of the first quarter for the Ravens. And the Gales start from the Raven 21. Keenan, Cuomo, caught it as he's falling. It was a little behind him, but what a catch by Cuomo at the seventh. Cuomo right, Cuomo left, and then tremendous body control there as he slides to the ground to make this reception. But again, great job by that offensive line once again for the Gales. And Cuomo didn't have anyone around him. First and goal. Keenan, Cuomo, covered. Keenan, still running, fires, caught, and then dropped. Good attempt by, by Falcone, sorry. Again, could Keenan have run? He could have, however, at that time, I think we saw a couple of the linebackers were starting to see his motion as he rolled out to the right-hand side, we're gonna step him up. It certainly would have stopped him shy of the end zone. With the interception, at least it stops the clock for the Gales, however, there's still plenty of time here with 102 to go here in the first half. Second and goal. 
Handoff to Tucker, but great work up front. But look at Tucker driving. He'll get to the five. That was a hard two yards, but Rashid Tucker did not go down easily. The Gales will have to settle for a field goal attempt. Almost felt like we're at Nixon Field there for a second with the uh, scrum going forward. Cedric Terrio, let's credit him, the defensive tackle on this play here for the Ravens. Doesn't make the tackle, but you can see him get upfield quickly there, forcing Tucker back inside where the rest of the Ravens defense converged. Liberatori puts through the 12-yard field goal. And so in the span of a little over a minute, the Gales have turned 14-0 into 24-0. But you got it. Sorry, Donnie, yep. I was going to say, you've got to say the Carlton defense won that last possession. I was just going to say we saw a little bit of this similar script in the first uh, game up in Ottawa where the Gales had a uh, touchdown pass, long touchdown pass to Langwa towards the end of the first half. On a second down rush play, the uh, Walter Carabin was able to recover a fumble and the Gales that time only able to come away with a Libertor single. This time, two turnovers, 10 points here in the last couple minutes of the first half. Now this surprises me and now he's changing his mind. I was wondering why the Ravens would chance another kickoff and not just take the ball at the 35. You know, and again, it was the Burton Shaw hit on the last play that forced the fumble, but it's not just, you know, the fumble. It's the, fa it's the job that, as we said earlier, that Libertor is doing kicking, especially to that corner, and that, that he's pinning Ferdinand in the corner. There's no way he's going to be able to get out across the 35. So the Ravens still with both their timeouts. 40.1 seconds left first half. First and 10 from their 35. Handoff. And making the tackle on Mulali is Ethan Martin and a holding penalty against Carlton. Jesse Lawson, the right tackle, holding Anthony Federico. Yeah, as we take a look at the replay here, you can see it right in the middle when you're pulling on the defensive lineman's jersey and you can extend it away from his shoulder pads. That's going to get called every time. Now, Bill, 35, well, I guess the Gales are choosing to take the penalty. Well, the clock would have run and the Gales have had to use a timeout. So Carlton should still be able to run out the first half unless they decide to put the ball in the air. And you'd have to think from their perspective, they would like to get a little bit of momentum going into halftime. And Van Conant will throw, and he'll be picked! An interception by Ashton miller Lonson, And the dam is broken, and things are flooding on the Carlton Ravens. Van Conant looks, under throws his intended receiver, Johnson on the play that time. Miller Melanson stepping underneath it. It's his second interception. So two interceptions and a fumble recovery on a kickoff here. My question is, why is the ball going in the air? Well, I, I would just say you've got Nathan Carter. Yes, he struggled this afternoon, but, you know, let's get out of well, the first half. He's barely touched the ball. Exactly. I mean, they, they, he's, he was on the sideline for the beginning of this second quarter. Keenan going deep. This is going to come back as it's incomplete. Huge hold on the offensive line. I didn't catch the number, Donnie. But yeah, it was uh, Ryan Berta actually tackled Terrio and brought him to the ground on the play that time. And what this does, it's going to make it, uh, if they're going to have to gain some yardage quickly here, even just to try a Libertor field goal, his longest of the season, 42 yards. So it'll be first and 20 as Carlton takes the penalty. Bringing in Washington here, so you wonder if this is going to be more of a running look here, even with 23 seconds to go here in the first half. Keenan will throw. Hansen makes the catch at the 39, but it's inbounds. 
18 and a half seconds left. Gales will run up to the line, see if they can get one more play. Just under throwing Langwa a little bit so that once he hits the ground, the play is over. Gales are going to have to use their timeout as the clock was running on them. They right. made a substitution as well. This uh, Things were not designed or being pulled off as if they were going to be able to get a playoff and then kick the field goal. Washington trying to get off the field quickly, bringing Falcone on. Probably need about another five yards here, you would think, to get it in uh, Libertor's range. The breeze right now going more across the field from the west to the east. It is slightly at his back. Now we should point out, if you don't know when you're viewing, the Gales, even though they have no timeouts left, as long as they get a play done before the clock shows zero, they could get a field goal off. So the middle of the field is still open for Keenan to get Liberatory a little closer than a 46-yard field goal attempt, which is what it would be right now. It's second and 12, but that is secondary right now to trying to get Liberatory closer for some more Gales points. Keenan over the middle. Quamo's got it. Quamo. All the way down to the 10 with 6.4 seconds left. Now do you have time to go to the end zone? I, I don't know. I, I was going to say because the play is going to be whistled in and indeed they're bringing right. on the field You're goal right. team here. Yep. I think that was the problem with, with the delay in getting that last yep. play in. You had to burn a timeout. Here you could have taken a, a timeout after this play and still had a chance yep. for one more offensive play. But they're middle of the field. Liberatory will set up his kicking tee at the Carlton 19, the clock is running. This will indeed, barring a penalty, be the last play of the first half. Lacandro is the holder. And the kick is good. And that'll do it for the first half. A disastrous last minute 57 for Carlton. They turn it over three times and they give up 13 points. It's 27 nothing at halftime for the Queens Gales on homecoming Saturday in Kingston. Donnie and I are back with the second half after in a bit. You're watching Gales football on OUA TV. Where exceptional student athletes are born, where records are broken, where great plays are made, where school colors ignite passion, where champions prevail, where tradition is celebrated, Ontario University Athletics. Ontario University Athletics has more than 4,000 female student athletes getting into the game. Some are playing for the little girl in the stands, aspiring to be a varsity athlete like them. Some are playing for the powerful group of allies that surround them both on and off of the field. And some are playing to show that talent, dedication, and hard work transcend the labels of gender. Many females, however, see their sport journey end during adolescence. For those who continue on, Varsity Athletics offers opportunity. It offers community. It's a means to not only continue your dream on the court, but excel beyond it. Because some student athletes may be looking to become Olympians and world champions. Some may see their passion for playing turn into a call for coaching. And some may aim to transform their athletics into prominent positions beyond the sporting world altogether. But for whatever their motives or goals, it's important to have the means to pursue them. It's important to feel like you can inspire the little girl in the stands compete with your teammates, and break down any barriers to get to where you want to be. And above all else, it's important to remember that we are one.
where exceptional student athletes are born, where records are broken, where great plays are made, where school colors ignite passion, where champions prevail, where tradition is celebrated, Ontario University Athletics. Ontario University Athletics has more than 4,000 female student athletes getting into the game. Some are playing for the little girl in the stands, aspiring to be a varsity athlete like them. Some are playing for the powerful group of allies that surround them both on and off of the field. And some are playing to show that talent, dedication, and hard work transcend the labels of gender. Many females, however, see their sport journey end during adolescence. For those who continue on, varsity athletics offers opportunity. It offers community. It's a means to not only continue your dream on the court, but excel beyond it. Because some student athletes may be looking to become Olympians and world champions. Some may see their passion for playing turn into a call for coaching. And some may aim to transform their athletics into prominent positions beyond the sporting world altogether. But for whatever their motives or goals, it's important to have the means to pursue them. It's important to feel like you can inspire the little girl in the stands compete with your teammates, and break down any barriers to get to where you want to be. And above all else, it's important to remember that we are one.
where exceptional student athletes are born, where records are broken, where great plays are made, where school colors ignite passion, where champions prevail, where tradition is celebrated, Ontario University Athletics. Good afternoon and welcome back to Richardson Stadium where the score at halftime on OUA TV, the Gales on top 27 to nothing and Bill an explosion by the Gales late in the second quarter there uh, with three turnovers by the Carlton Ravens leading to this big lead for the Gales at halftime. Yeah, it was 14 to nothing with 157 left and then the Gales defense made some plays. Um... This one comes from the first quarter. That was the first interception by McCallum. And then uh, Rashid Tucker's been slowed down. And then here's the first of the inter or this is a sack by Federico. And uh, unfortunately can't get, but basically there was an interception by the Gales resulted they turned it over inside Carlton territory scored the touchdown on the ensuing kickoff hit by Burton Shaw got a fumble they got a field goal out of that then a questionable pass play call I would think both of us felt by Carlton with 40 seconds left Gales picked that off and they get it first and 10 in Carlton territory give the Carlton defense credit only gave up two field goals on on two of those three turnovers uh, but the Gales now lead 27 nothing as opposed to when it was 14 nothing and with a couple minutes to go if maybe uh, we just go back to take a look at some of those keys of the game that we identified off the uh, you know back in the pregame show uh, one of the things I think we talked about was the Gales needing that balance on offense and that struggled a little bit in that first quarter, but really seeing James Keenan coming untracked in the second quarter. Well, I think the balance comes from the fact that Carlton's taking away Rasheed Tucker. It's going to be tough as the weeks go on for Rasheed Tucker to be predominantly there for them right off the bat. They're going to have to and limit the mistakes. They've done that. They've had some bad penalties, maybe called a timeout before they wanted to. But other than that, they didn't turn the ball over like they did last week against Guelph. And the defense has been absolutely phenomenal, producing turnovers, getting to Van Conant, rushing them. Probably the result of those two picks in the last uh, two minutes of the first half was the fact that he's always feeling pressure. And when you look at things for Carlton, it, it's it, could they protect Van Conant? I think the Gales defensive line has won that battle. Spreading the ball around at wide receiver, he struggled throwing the ball. And with the interceptions, it's hard to spread it around. He's only gotten the ball completions to three receivers. And they they wanted to force the Gales to throw. They've shut down Tucker, but Keenan's done such a good job spreading the ball around, throwing it. Uh, so I think when you break down those keys to the game, you see why it's 27 nothing for the Gales. In that first half, James Keenan, 15 to 23 for 233 yards and those two touchdown passes. The 42-yarder to Sebastian Hansen, and then the 28-yarder to Sakia Cuomo. Uh, Rasheed Tucker in that first half, 12 carries for just 38 yards, so a little bit of a slow start for Tucker. We did see him that second half last week, though, against Guelphville, that Tucker, especially as the game wore on, was able to get things going. You wonder now for the Gales with such a big lead here going into the second half, do we start to see them trying to get Tucker going a little bit more again? Well, I think that's certainly how you're going to eat clock right I mean right now up 27 nothing the Gales don't need to force anything 
they're in control of this game right now. It's up to Carlton to try and get back into it. And so I think they're going to want to try and establish Rashid, but I think the more important thing will be the mistake free. Don't make any mistakes. Don't give any momentum chances to Carlton. Let Carlton try and get their offense on track against your highly ranked defense. And on Carlton's side, how much longer do you go with Van Conan? He's struggling. He's a young quarterback. I'm sure he's got a bright future, but right now the Gales defense is in his head. Van Conan just four of 13 for 43 yards through the air in, in the first half. And three picks. So of his four, you know, he's completed four passes, but he's thrown almost thrown as many interceptions. So Ferdinand and Cesar back to return this kick from Nick Libertor. Gales on top, 27 to nothing here to begin the second half. And it's going to come down to Ferdinand just, just inside the end zone, up across the 10. Up to the 15, he's going to be wrapped up there. And then, Bill, question here as to whether or not that was judged to be in the end zone or not. Well, it doesn't matter on a, on a kickoff. Sorry. But of more to the point, I thought Nolan Bedard got held, and he's asking referee Chris Venter about it as well. But still, the Gales, Gales coverage on special teams today has been outstanding. And we'll see if Van Conant gets... Uh, so the start, it's hard to tell the eight or the nine on the jersey. Yeah, indeed it is. Van Conant, Tristan Rinaldis saw a little bit of action in that Panda game loss to Ottawa two weeks ago. Nathan Carter in the backfield. Carter in that first half, just four carries for six yards as he gets the first carry here. Big hole on first down, and he picks up a first down out across the 25 before Nolan Bedard comes up to wrap him up. And you and I were talking at halftime off the air Donnie, about the fact that Nathan Carter didn't play about five or six minutes to start that second quarter. And I think they've, they've got a pretty good tandem in Ferguson and Carter, but when you've got a fifth-year running back who's approaching 3,000 yards for a career, you got to start feeding him in the ball. And even down 27 nothing, let's get him going if you're Carlton. Carter right now would need 43 more yards to become the first Carlton Raven to reach that, reach that number. Gets the carry here on second down. Gets met in the backfield. Walter Carabin coming up quickly along with Eaton Martin to make the tackle. Now, of course, the problem when you're down 27 nothing, reestablishing the run when your quarterback has struggled through the air is this Gale's defense. Fool me once with the draw, but you're not going to fool me again. Carabin already, that's his fourth tackle so far this afternoon, the leading tackler for the Gales. Their defensive signal, signal caller and middle linebacker. So second and close to 10, maybe nine and a half. Play action fake by Van Conant, throwing it deep downfield. He's got Brugling open, but the ball underthrown a little bit and falls incomplete, throwing into double, almost triple coverage that time. And we're gonna see Another punt this afternoon, once again, for for Plouffe. But it, what I did like from Van Conan on that pass was he didn't hesitate. He, I think in the first half, he was doubting himself. As you look at Brugling, who is limping to the sideline now for Carlton, so that would be a big loss, losing their veteran receiver. But uh, it, it went incomplete, but I, I thought it was a m probably the best throw Van Conan's had this afternoon. Colonna and Bedard back to receive this punt. It's a nice oh. high spiraling punt by Plouffe. Bedard back inside his 40, makes a move up across the 45 before he's gonna be tackled there. And Bill at halftime, the Gales honoring some Hall of Fame inductees, one of the first ones, the 1922 to 24. I think Gales. we called those games, didn't we? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we've both been around a little bit, maybe not quite that far back. Uh, that was the three consecutive years Grey Cup champs beating Edmonton in 1922, Regina in 1923, and then beating Toronto Bombay Beach 11-3 for their third successive Grey Cup win in the 1924 season. That Balmy Beach team. Keenan, handoff, Tucker, nice hole up through the middle of the secondary and across. 
the uh, in across midfield and almost broke free. Cole Hepburn making the touchdown saving tackle. Tucker's biggest gain here this afternoon. Just great blocking. And again, we talk about it all the time with Rashid. The quick feet, the vision, just l allowing his blockers to set it up and then his bursts through the holes. Tucker, second straight carry here, but this time it's going to be uh, Trey O'Brien wrapping him up after just a three-yard gain on the play. And on second down, Anthony Souls checks in. Make it second and a long six here for the Gales. Ball spotted at the Raven 43. 27 nothing. the Gales up on top of the Ravens here early in the second half. And it looks to be a little bit of confusion with the Gales receivers on the far side. Tucker ball tipped at the line of scrimmage and Falcone diving to make a reception. It's actually gonna be called incomplete. And the Gales are likely going to be forced to punt here on third down. But again, when you're up 27 nothing, that's fine. You got the ball into Carlton territory. Liberatore hits another of his great punts. You've got them pinned deep. And we forget about that too, Donnie, from the second quarter. Carlton was in their own the shadow of their goalposts pretty much that entire quarter. You had those three turnovers, but also that great coffin corner punt by Liberatore to the Carlton one that Averaging resulted in two points. Average 38.3 yards on six punts in the first half did Libertor and a spiraling punt coming down. It's going to bounce out of bounds at about the 14 or 15 yard line is where the Ravens will get this next drive going. Bill, the next inductee recognized at halftime. We went from the Grey Cups in the 20s to the Vanier Cup champion Gales in 2009. And we certainly both remember the, uh, that team. We're going to get to some of the players on that team later and that, but the excitement of that team throughout uh, the regular season, some of those tremendous games yeah. against Western. Last, last Vanier Cup that the Gales have won. Um, it was the first one under Pat Shan. And that team, in my opinion, arguably played the greatest football game in the history of U Sport, I think, in that Yates Cup final with Western. And right, then you, to beat Laval in the, in the Mitchell and then tremendous comeback in that Vanier. Yeah. On first down this time, it's going to be Ferguson with the carry as he gets trips tripped up. And then a little bit of rough play after it. It looks as though it's going to be a penalty Just against stupid. the Ravens. Matt Goodall, number 55. I mean, it, it, they're a frustrated team right now, but he just pushed the Gales player right back down to the ground, right in front of all the officials, and it's after the play, so instead of second and eight, it's now gonna be second and 23. And again, it's not half the distance. They get as much of the yardage as they can all the way back to the one, one yard line, and Goodall called off the field by the Gales, off, uh, sorry, the Ravens offensive line coach. Well, it's just, and it, I, I should apologize, it's not a, I mean, he doesn't, he knows better than that. He's just, he's frustrated. It's a penalty that you just can't have. I mean, this is a team going to the playoffs and you can see how upset the coaching staff is because now you've put a struggling quarterback in bad shape. Van Conant completes the ball on second and down here, but coming up well shy of first down yardage on the play is Kalik Johnson. And the Gales just simply dot, dropping deep into a, a deep zone there limiting the Ravens' uh, gain on the play. Well, the, the penalty basically forces you to give up two points now. And and that's, I think, what really upsets the coaching staff because you're, you've got a young team, especially at quarterback. You're down 27 to nothing on the road, and then you put yourself back to the one-yard line with an unnecessary roughness penalty. You, would you just say can't an, have that. An unne unnecessary, unnecessary roughness penalty, I would think. I wasn't going to say that, but uh, I left it for you. Right Bedard here. back to return. The Ravens taking as much time off the clock as they can, and this time Plouffe just simply concedes the two points in the end zone. That'll extend the Gales' lead to 29 to nothing here with 9.37 left to go here in the fourth quarter, in the third quarter, sorry. 
Again, a reminder, the Gales coming into this game undefeated. And the last time they were undefeated at this stage was back in that 2009 season. The last time they went undefeated throughout the regular season was the year before, in 2008, before they fell to the Ottawa UGGs in the playoffs. As we go back to take a look at some of the other Hall of Fame inductees this afternoon, Bill, a uh, couple of receivers. Let's start off with Scott Bessestar back in the early 80s. Well, you and I uh, both remember him from those great OQIFC championship teams under coach Doug Hargraves. Uh, phenomenal catch in the dying seconds in Lennoxville, Quebec at then first place Bishops to win the 84 Dunsmore Cup. Gales would lose in the Atlantic Bowl that year, but uh, he was an outstanding receiver. Might not have been the fastest player on the field, but in my opinion, had the best hands um, back in, in the 80s. So the Gales choosing to receive the kickoff. So Forcier on to boot the ball away. It's a high, short kick. And Bedard comes across to make the return on the play. Noah Gross also back there. And Bedard actually took the ball almost out of Gross's hands there. Gales will scrimmage from their 38-yard line. Well, you could see what Carlton was doing. Their last kickoff late in the first half. Gross uh, let it bounce, and uh, this time I think Bedard, it was close enough. He's the veteran, so he decided to take it. So Keenan, as he does all the time out of the shotgun, it's gonna be a play action fake, and actually then a screen play, flipping it out here to Tucker. Gets a block, gets downfield, out near midfield, blocking downfield for the Gales on the play with Sebastian Hansen, and then there's another flag at the end of the play. I don't know what, if this is unnecessary roughness on the Gales, I think this is a, a ticky-tack penalty because it, it's, it's someone that came into that basically scrum right here. I don't know who it unless it's a high tackle on Carlton, but yeah, that's, that's so a terrible call. After the yards gain, so it will move them back. It'll be first and 10. Cedric Terrio, the injured Raven, down on the field. With a delay here, Bill, we'll talk about some of the other players moving to the defensive side of the ball for the next couple of folks. Thane Carter and Curtis McClellan back from the early, two, early and mid-2000s. Well, Curtis McClellan, of course, the son of the late great uh, Gales player, Gord McClellan, and uh, was an outstanding defensive player for Queens. And Thane Carter, tremendous linebacker, one of the more cerebral linebackers in the 2000s who just seemed to be everywhere to make the right play on the Gales defense. So Gales all the way back after that long play, actually gained a yard in the end, out to the 39 after the penalty yardage. Keenan looking downfield, throws it underneath, and it bounces off of the hands of Josh McLeod, and coming away with an interception are the Ravens on the play. And initially, Bill, I was wondering if that was even going to be a, com a chance for completion of McLeod. Well, I think that's what Keenan's saying. We'll have to look at it on the replay to see if it, it – I mean, James is positive it hit the ground, but I'm wondering if it hit the receiver's foot. Let's see. Well, it's hard to tell there. If we could slow that down at all, it'd be nice to, to see it slowed down. Just as the ball gets the receiver, slow it down, slow it, slow it, slow it. No, I don't think that touched the ground. So Louis Laveau coming away with the interception on the play for the Ravens. They'll get this drive scrimmage from the 48 of the Gales. It's a handoff inside. Nice first down yardage on the play is Josh Ferguson. And then a fumble at the end of the play. The Gales say they have it. The officials say that he was down. So the Ravens will hold, maintain possession here. Well, again, Carter goes to the bench. And the third year running back 
out of Niagara, Ontario, Josh Ferguson comes in. We saw this in the second quarter. And Carter had had a nice gain on his first carry here in yeah. the second half. So second and a long five. Handoff again to Ferguson. He's got first down yardage as he drags Darian Newell making a tackle. Ethan Martin down on the field right now for Queens. I think the Gales were offside. And while they take a look at Martin, we'll talk about a couple more of the Hall of Fame inductees. A couple players had for tremendous careers, not only as Gales, but also some uh, solid careers in particular for Rob Bagg, but also Brad Smith uh, as receivers, both here with Queens and then Bagg, especially with the, uh, with the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Yeah, Rob Bagg probably next to Jock Climby might be one of the more successful Gales CFL players in recent memory. Played in a couple of great cups. Was up for, I believe, the most valuable Canadian player in the CFL one year. And a local product too, right out of Kingston. Played at Frontenac Secondary School. So Martin able to walk off slowly under his old own steam. Looks to be favoring his left leg on after that play. And again, the Gales play at Ottawa next week and then have a bye. And if they win, do indeed win today, they basically have home field advantage throughout the East Division playoffs. So the wounded could get better. Van Conant read option. He gets smacked by Federico. Might have gained a yard on the play. They brought Mullally in motion, but then Van Conant just taking the ball and trying to run forward. Well, I, I think it wasn't, it was the right read by Van Conant, but I don't know if he's the type of running quarterback um, that should be hanging on to it. But I'll tell you, Anthony Federico, he has such quiet games, yet when you look at the stats at the end of it, He's dominated. Second and nine, Van Conant dropping back to pass, forced to scramble out far side, and coming up to make the tackle quickly on the play, sort of the first down to Stefan East for the Gales. I think there's no hesitation here. You go for it if you're Carlton. Three points does little. And indeed, Van Conant is staying on the field. It'll be third and almost three yards here, right from the 30. They have to get to just outside of the Gales 27. And they're going to have to go without Keaton Brugling. Yeah, he went on down again. He, he went off on their early, uh, their last series limping, and I think he tried to give it a go. And looks like his calf is wrapped up. And just don't think he could go anymore. And now. So third and almost three. One of the key plays in last week's win over the Guelph Griffins, the Gales holding on third down at the goal line. Well, and now again, they're late getting that play into Van Conan. Time clock now under 10 seconds. Ferguson in the backfield along with Van Conan. It's gonna be a handoff to Ferguson. He gets hit at the line of scrimmage. I don't think he got and it. And he's gonna be close. I think it's gonna be about a half yard shy of what he had to gain. And indeed, that is the case. He just gets to the 28. He had to get almost to the 27. And the Gales turned the ball over on downs three times in the first half. They turned it over this time on downs here. 6.04 to go here in the, sec in the third quarter. And again, I... I don't think it's the sole reason they don't get this, but it, it, it happened in the first half. They were rushed on that play because they were late getting the signal into Van Conan. It's a read option play. I mean, the hole was there. It was just a great tackle on Ferguson, but they were rushed. On first down, it's a handoff to Tucker. Outside, then cuts back up middle. And again, we see 
Rashid Tucker the ability to just see that hole and get good gain, get another good gain here on first down. He's just so quick at, as we say, with his feet that he gets through that initial hole, but then his change of direction is so quick that in, a, in close quarters, he just seems to be able to get, gain yardage. Second and three, handoff again to Tucker. And this time the Ravens able to stop him shy of the first down. Xavier Lee Malone making the tackle on that play and the Gales are gonna be forced to punt here third with uh, third and two upcoming. That was great defense up front by the, by the Ravens because that's the key. You wanna make Rasheed Tucker have to stop before he gets to that hole and then restart. When he's allowed to get to that hole and then change direction, he's 10 yards down the field before you've got a chance to tackle him. So that was just good work up front. It's a, it, he puts a lot of pressure on your front, your down lineman as a defense. The Libertor, a high punt coming downfield. The Ferdinand inside is 40. He tries to get away from Wishart on the far side. Eventually gets knocked out of bounds at about the 52 of the Ravens. Oh my goodness. How this is not called a hold. You just saw there on your screen, number 26, Keegan Bannock trying to put his shirt back over his shoulder pad. His sh he was held by a Carlton player for about five yards towards the Carlton sideline on that return, but no flag. Actually check it, it's gonna be back at the 50. Carter in the backfield this time along with Van Conant. Van Conant looking near side and he telegraphs, it's picked off. Running downfield with it and he's gonna be gone for a touchdown. Wells Carabin, sorry, gets tackled at the five yard line. Well, unfortunately for Wells, the piano fell on his back at about the 15 yard line and great work. I didn't catch the number of the receiver for Carlton, but he never gave up and he caught up to the linebacker, but you're exactly right, Donnie. Completely telegraphed and the only one there is Wells Carabin and almost had a pick six. It's actually Van Conant that makes the tackle. So good hustle by the quarterback, but for, again, he telegraphed. Fourth turnover, Carabin, that's his first interception of the season for the Gales, down to the six of the Ravens. And a handoff to Tucker, makes a move in the hole and bursts wow. into the end zone. Rasheed Tucker, his fifth touchdown as a Gale this season. Wow, and this, the Carlton defense, you have to say, is pretty down when they're coming on after that interception, and then you, you have to try and tackle in close quarters from seven yards. Rasheed Tucker, and great blocking up front again, and he just dances his way to the touchdown. Tucker has almost doubled his yardage from half from the half time and just 3.54 here to go in the third quarter. Motion off the side of the left side of the Ravens defensive line, but Libertor puts it up and through and the score is now 36 to nothing. And Bill, we're talking about one Gales running back picking up his fifth touchdown. Another notable Gales running back this afternoon inducted into the Hall of Fame, Mike Giffen. Another local product out of Bay Ridge Secondary School. Mike also went to the CFL for a little bit of time with the Montreal Alouettes. Now works here in Kingston, but he was one of the tough, tough running backs that the Gales have had over the years. So homecoming 2021 and the Gales letting their fans get in a lot of practice with the Oral Thighs here this <laughs> afternoon. Again, with the win, and right now it certainly looks likely, the Gales would go to 5-0 and on the season and would also clinch first place in the OU East for this season with one game to go next, uh, sorry, this Thursday 
coming up in Ottawa, and then they have the bye in the final week of the regular season. Takes so much pressure off that short week, Donnie. And now you can think about resting some players that are, are banged up. I mean, sure, you'd like to finish undefeated, but it's more about the, the long haul in November and having everybody healthy. Libertor boots it away, far side. Again, a tremendous kick inside the numbers. Comes down to Ferdinand at his 11, comes across field, and then he slips, crossing the 15, gets up to the 17, where the Ravens will get this next drive started. We'll see if Van Conant comes out. I don't know when you're dealing with young quarterbacks if you'd want to bench them after a pick like oh. that, but at some point, you've got to see what the other guys can do. You do, but I think the other thing, I think they've shown over these last three games, they gave Ronaldus a little bit of action in that Panda game loss that they had against Ottawa, but right now, yes, they're getting blown out in this game, but they still have another game in two weeks, Yeah, you know, to finish off the season against Ottawa, and they still want to try and a, hope that A, they can clinch a playoff spot, and then B, ideally, potentially get a home field game. Well, and certainly something we've got to talk about is the fact that with the schedule this year, the Gales may be facing a team in the playoffs and trying to beat them for a third time. This is the first time you actually dug up this information uh, to lose notes, but this is the first time since 1997 that the Gales have played Carlton twice in the regular season, and that was back in the old OQIFC. And the Gales won both of those games. They faced Ottawa a couple times in the next couple of years. And then at that point, uh, for some of our maybe more seasoned Gales fans, they will also remember that's when you started to see some of the crossover between the OU and the OQIFC and then eventually in the 2000 season. And since, the Gales have been playing exclusively ag against the OU in the regular season. It was also when you saw Laval starting to gain some national prominence in the OQIFC. Brugling is again at the pivot. Ferguson in the backfield alongside him. Mullally in motion, handoff to Ferguson, has a hole off the far side before he's gonna be hit by Josh McBain as he gets up across the 20 to about the 22. So I checked that as Freud Cesar, and the Cesar was the ball carrier for much of the first game when the Gales faced the Ravens up in Ottawa. Give him six on first down there, second and four. Brooklyn's really hobbling out there. I, I wonder if at some point Carlton coaching staff needs to save him from himself to have him for the playoffs. Second down carry by Cesar, and again he gets hit by McBain, but then able to, with a push from the offensive line, get up to across the 25. It looks as though they're gonna be about a half yard short of first down yardage here. And I don't know what, I, I, it looks like they're gonna punt. So for Carlton, they have the bye next week, and then as you said, Donnie, they play Ottawa, close out the regular season. Toronto is in the mix with two losses, Ottawa with two losses, Carleton will have three losses. So there's still a home playoff game for somebody in this division if they can finish second. Toronto winning earlier this afternoon in, York, uh, in Toronto against the York Lions, so Carlton, Ottawa, and Toronto will all have four points after this week's action. A nice punt by Plouffe. Coming back, Bedard just outside his 40, makes a move, gets across the 45 where he stopped there. And as we turn back to take a look at a, and it's now gonna be Ryan Lacandro. So Lacandro coming out for the first time this season. Going back to two years ago, Bill, it was a lot of the battle between Lacandro yep. and Keenan, and then over the time through COVID and certainly yep. through this season, Keenan has uh, s solidified that position. And if you don't remember Ryan Lacandro, big, strong arm quarterback. They're both out of Ottawa, Keenan and Lacandro, but Lacandro maybe not as mobile. And Burke Derbyshire now carrying the ball for the Gales. Nice yardage on first down here. Gets out across the 50, up close to midfield. 
give him about seven yards on that first down carry. So Keenan this afternoon, 16 to 26, 251 yards, the two touchdowns and the one interception. And if that's the end of his day, and so far this afternoon, Tucker had carried the ball 17 times for 74 yards and that touchdown on the last drive. On second down, a handoff again to Ber Derbyshire. First down across midfield down to the Carlton 51-yard line. And I don't think we've said enough superlatives about this offensive line. Watch this replay. They've just, they're knocking back Ravens and allowing the running backs to just gain chunks of yardage. Butler, Evan Florin, Ryan Berta, Josh Mosley, and Jaws Kara, the front five for the Gales. And a handoff again to Derbyshire, and again, that initial push of the offensive line gets him downfield for close to five yards, maybe four here on first down. Late in this third quarter, <laughs> You can see that the ball came loose, but after he was down in number 96, or sorry, Trey O'Brien, number 98, wouldn't give it up, but it's already been ruled done as a play. So second and six here for the Gales. McAndrew back to attempt his first pass of this afternoon and this season. He's got it complete out far sideline. Nice reception by Josh McLeod. Picks up a first down inside, actually all the way down to the Ravens 20 yard line. What a beautiful throw by Ryan Lacandro. Again, showing off that great arm. Gales don't really have a backup quarterback. You could argue that they've got a 1A and a 1B, but look at it. It's just such a pretty release and put that right in to the bread basket of Josh McLeod. Nice route run that time by McLeod. First down carry here to Derbyshire. Cuts off, off tackle. Had the initial hole up the middle and then bounced it outside. Picks up close to five yards. And that is the final play of the third quarter here with the Gales on top, 36 to nothing. You're watching Gales football on OUA TV. exceptional student athletes are born where records are broken where great plays are made where school colors ignite and welcome back to gales football on oua tv the score after the after the three-quarter break 36 to nothing for the gales they're driving with the ball down to the carlton 16 yard line second and six Ryan Lacandro now here late in the third quarter at the pivot for the Gales and at running back for Queens on this second down play is Anthony Soles. It's going to be a handoff to Soles, bounces it outside, cuts it back up inside. He's going to be down to about the 12-yard line. He had to get down to just outside the 10. And it looks as though the Gales are going to keep the offense on the field here. With third and a long one. Jaden Washington checking in late and coming out of the Gales offensive formation, Nathan Falcone. McAndrew calling the signals. 
Hand off to Souls. Big hole up the middle. Makes a move at the five. Gets all the way down to about the four yard line. Make it first and goal for the Gales. Well, that fake to Quamo just took away the defensive line just enough. And a great block by Jaden Washington to slow down Nathan Clark enough that Souls could get the hole. And Falcone checking in as Washington comes out for this first and goal play. And off again to Souls, has the ball up through the middle and picks up his first touchdown as a Gale. 13-31 left to go here in the fourth quarter and the Gales extend their lead to 42 to nothing. Well, that offensive line just continues to block holes that the backs can easily get through. Nice run by Souls. And right now this Carlton Ravens defense is tired. It's down in the dumps and struggling. As Libertor boots the ball up and through as we go back to take a look at uh, down memory lane with uh, some other Gales who were inducted into the Hall of Fame this afternoon with that touchdown being scored in the south end zone. Bill, arguably one of the most famous plays for the Gales. Jimmy Allen also scored a rather famous touchdown in that south end zone. He did, and I was in that end zone uh, watching the game, and when that field goal missed by Laval, and Jimmy Allen caught it. You could tell it was a long field goal attempt. The Laval kicker had a good leg. It was not a, a bad attempt, but he missed it. And with all offensive linemen on the field for Laval and Jimmy Allen's speed, he got a the wall set up and he was gone 120 yards and that basically won the Mitchell Bowl for Queens. And then they went a week later and won the Vanier Cup up in Laval, ironically enough. But one of those plays where as soon as Jimmy Allen caught it, you were thinking to yourself, he could take this the distance. Ferdinand in this case will not be taking it the distance as he gets out across the 20 up to the 23. And one of the key receivers on that team, Bill, Scott Valberg also being inducted into the Hall of Fame here this afternoon. Another local product played at Bay Ridge secondary school around the same time as Mike Giffen, Rob Bag, and uh, had a very great, a very strong career at Queens and uh, was able to get a Vanier Cup ring and now is a, an official in the OUA. Fake handoff to Cesar. And Van Cone actually checked that. It's Rinaldis now in at quarterback for the Ravens with a nice run on first down. A little bit of a read option look for the Ravens. Gets up to the 34 yard line. Well, I would think just from that play and, and the confidence he showed on that read option that the read option is more designed for him and plays to his strengths more than Van Conan. And the Gales might want to keep this version of the tape if they meet them again in the playoffs and see Rinaldis. Second and in inches here for the Ravens. Rinaldis back to pass and he dumps it off over the middle and get getting tackled quickly by Boucher on the play. Gloden Mullally, leading receiver coming into this game for the Ravens, just a second reception here this afternoon. And no gain on the play, so it makes it second and 10. So he checked that he did pick up the first down on the previous play. Fake to Malali, and then again, Ronaldo's hat makes a move, picks up first down yardage out to the Ravens 50. So not necessarily the biggest pivot on the field. But he's quick. He is quick. And just watch the replay. It's good blocking up front. But again, 
He took it to the sort of off tackle, so a good read by him because all the pursuit defensively was inside at the running back. And once he got through the line of scrimmage, he was able to pick up the first down was Rinaldis. High snap, and this time he's going to scramble up field, uses his speed, picks up first down yardage inside the Gale 50. Eventually tackled on the play by Ashton Millen-Melanson. And Owen Stewart is really upset at himself because he went up too far on that high snap, and by overcommitting, that's what gave the hole there, and it almost became an easy quarterback draw for Rinaldis. But this is a, a, an impressive drive right now, and yes, it's against some backups on the Gales' defense, but it's confidence building for the Carlton Ravens today. They can't up to stays our Ronaldus keeps it, and then McBain making the tackle right at the line of scrimmage. Now the problem that I see right now is Ronaldus has only thrown the one pass. He doesn't seem to be as comfortable throwing the ball. They haven't really called anything other than the one pass for him. It almost reminds me of before COVID, two young quarterbacks with the Gales in Lacandro and, uh, and James Keenan. Both Ottawa natives, by the way. So second and eight for Rinaldis. And he's going to drop back to throw. Flips out a screen pass on the play to Cesar. And he's going to be tackled for a loss. Gives up a couple yards on that play. That time, Owen Stewart, he was upset at himself a couple plays ago not keeping his position. That time he put, he did his job up front and was the first one there on the screen pass. So great comeback by Owen Stewart a couple of plays later, but it does look like he may have injured a, his hand. Silas Hubert also there for the tackle for Queens. Bedard standing back inside his 10 yard line. Low snap, Plouffe gets off a nice high spiraling punch. Bedard back to his six and then he gets hit right away. Downfield quickly with the tackle. Is Joaquin How is Christian. that not no yards? Actually, sorry, check that, it was Jonathan Edward. And He's we well inside the five, and we saw it on the replay. He's inside the 10, it was caught at the six. It's another missed call by the officials. And that could have gotten Nolan Bedard seriously hurt. It's a good thing he was able to bounce up. And the Gales coaches in the next booth over from us also expressing a similar opinion on that play. Lacandro is going to be a handoff. Derbyshire up the middle, has a nice yardage up across the 10, 15, and out close to first down yardage. Nice job by the offensive line on that play. Opening up a nice hole. Well, this is what you like to see from your offense too. When you've got a game safely in hand that you can sort of grind it out with just runs. And another gain on first down here. And Bill, as we're talking about the offensive line, another Gales Hall of Fame inductee this afternoon, Matt O'Donnell. Tremendous offensive lineman here and also now with Edmonton. Again, part of that uh, 2009 Vanier Cup team. Stalwart on that offensive line that kept Danny Brannigan protected and allowed him to gain a lot of yards through the air. On second down, Derbyshire, big hole off the left side of the offensive line, up across the 35, out to the 40. And Bill, you're leading right into the final inductee this afternoon, the pivot of that Vanier Cup season. You already mentioned his name, Danny Brannigan, tremendous player for the Gales. Well, and he, he was one of the shorter quarterbacks in the OUA that 2009 year, but he was his arm strength and his timing with his receivers, just brilliant. And uh, for five years was one of the greats to put on the tricolor. You know, you talked about the 
phenomenal season and some of the tremendous matchups that he had with players like Mike Falls that, you know, that battle between Western oh, and, and Queen over game. those years. That, it, that 2009 Yates Cup game again. Uh, show me a game that was better than that one. And uh, we maybe have a, can have an argument, but uh, back and forth and uh, Western driving to win it at the end and just a defensive play by the Gales defense. It was one of those things where whoever had the ball last, could you make the stop? And the Gales were able to and went on and won the Vanier Cup. Connor Burtonshaw in at running back this time for Derbyshire. And he has the carry on first down off the right side of the offensive line out across the 40. You take a look at the game the next week and the Gales coming in as a tremendous underdog against Laval. And really, I think one of the keys I thought was the, the coaching job that Pat Sheehan did in that game and the number of times they went for it you know, really, try, really trying to control the ball and keep that Laval offense off the field. Well, and and I I think I think Laval came in thinking that they'd already been guaranteed to go home for the Vanier Cup. They were expecting to, and I I totally agree with you, Donnie. I thought the Gales coaching staff out coached a very good Laval coaching staff that has since then won a lot of Vanier Cups. But on that day, I thought Queens was better prepared. I thought Queens made the bigger plays. And I think one other thing from that 2009 Mitchell Bowl was the fact that this Richardson Stadium artificial turf wasn't here. It was natural grass. And I do think that slowed Laval down a bit. Gales were used to playing on it. There's not a lot of fields back then that had natural grass. And uh, I think the Gales kept kept punching the heavyweight champion and eventually the heavyweight champion fell. That second down pass played knocked down off of Lacandro. A punt here on third down. Bounces down to Ferdinand at his 35. He's gonna reverse field inside the 30 and then slips and gets tripped all the way back to his 28. And then if you wanna go with the trilogy of Incredible Gales victories down big at the halftime. The biggest comeback in the history of the Vanier Cup. Coming out eventually with a 33 to 31 victory over the Calgary Dinos. And, you know, I remember going down to that game or going up to that game, I guess, at Quebec City. And, you know, the disappointment that the Laval had, but the job that they did hosting that Vanier Cup oh, it's was, why they've was got just this incredible. Year's. It's why they're, why they're hosting this year's. They are. They're... That, that city has embraced university football. And really, in my opinion, Donnie, it's Laval that's the reason that the Quebec Conference exists and is able to sort of stand on its own why teams like Queens were able to come to the OUA and the Quebec Conference was able to continue. You look at, Mon sorry, you look at Montreal, you look at Sher Sherbrooke, they're modeled after that Laval. Even Carlton modeled after that Laval plan. That first down pass play low from Rinaldis. Make it second and 10. Rinaldis looking far side. He's got it short, in intercepted on the play. Aston Miller Melanson with the pick here. It's his second of this afternoon. And Bill, as we start to talk about teams like Montreal and Laval, let's take a look at uh, this week's top 10 uh, rankings across the uh, across U Sports. And there are the Caravan. Up at the top, Western will stay at number two after their nice win. Laval slowly creeping up. And again, the Vanier Cup will be played at their home field, so uh, Gale stay at five. And so uh, a lot of things didn't change. Windsor moved in to number 10, but I think they'll probably be falling out. Or sorry, didn't get into the top Derby 10. Derbyshire bouncing it outside on first down. There's a flag, looks to be in the air of a hold in behind the play as he was down inside the 35. I don't know. Although it might be a, well. Gales are walking back. Oh, I saw a Gale player without his helmet. Uh, 
you know, so one of the team take a look at the uh, replay. Oh, oh. Um, you know, one of the uh, teams certainly going to be dropping out is Mac. Uh, you know, struggled. Yeah. Three consecutive losses. Here. Can't figure that that team out, uh, Donnie. I mean, a couple of weeks ago, or I guess three or four weeks ago, they handily beat Waterloo. And uh, now to go into a bit of a slump like they have, it just it really seems like there's a bunch of middling teams right now trying to find their way. And then there's Queens and Western sort of on a collision course, but still uh, uh, many weeks to go. Derbyshire wrapped up after a very short gain thrown to the ground on the play. Ball coming out, it was Jaden DeLorme with the tackle, but he was deemed to be down. So to update some of the scores from earlier, Western a big victory over Windsor. So Western now move into first place in the OU West. Waterloo take on Guelph later this evening. Waterloo and Windsor tied with four points, and Laurier also after that big victory, a shutout victory over McMaster, they move to four points on the season. And that'll be a big game for Guelph especially because all of a sudden the Griffins are losing contact with a playoff spot. On second and 19, and Lacandro is going to be sacked on the play, came off of his initial read, but then coming up on the blitz was Malik Yusuf with the sack. Well, it was just a great speed rush by uh, Malik Yusuf and uh, got to Lacandro. And as you said, Lacandro couldn't find his first read. And by the time he started to look for someone else, Yusuf was right there for the sack. So Gales are going to be forced to punt the ball away once again here this afternoon. And it's a wobbly punt, and it's going to bounce through the hands of Ferdinand. He goes back to the 26 and then just simply bats the ball out of bounds. Well, he fumbled that kickoff. He struggled on that return. He just tried to get it on the run. And again, it, another example of why Nolan Bedard is so good at returning punts for the Gales, but then had the heads up to at least knock it out of bounds. I'm not sure what this well, I, I flag wondered is. Because it was an like he intentionally batted the ball out of bounds if that but might be you can you sh my understanding is i mean in canadian football why can't you do that wait to see what the officials say you might be right donnie and i hate saying that sentence So actually he went out of that. Okay, the key is he went out of bounds. He then was standing came back out of bounds when he and hit knocked it. it out. Right. Right. Okay. So that that makes so, sense. So it was half right then in that case. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway. And I can way. handle that. <laughs> I can handle that. The Ravens back to the seventeen yard line. Again, forty three to nothing here the score. And we're gonna be counting down to the three minute warning after this play. Tristan Ronaldis in at quarterback. Fakes the handoff, and then comes around the right side, has a hole up across the 40, out near midfield, and using his speed, unfortunately, Ravens fans, there's a flag in behind the play. I think that's how he got to the outside. And indeed, it's going to be a hold against Carlton. But Bill, once again, really impressed by the speed uh, of this uh, rookie uh, Ravens pivot. Well, and the interesting thing is, you know, can you develop the throwing part of things because that certainly to me having only seen him today would suggest why he's not the starter over Van Conant. Van Conant I think just got rattled today. He looks like he's a he's a very promising thrower of the football. And, and you go back to two years ago and yep. you already mentioned it earlier the Gales were in a yep. similar situation. James Keenan through COVID and, and what we always say about season. if he could throw the football, what a dynamic quarterback he'd be. Like right now, Ronaldus isn't even looking to throw the ball. Like these are all designed quarterback draws. And uh, how is that not a penalty? So Gabe Boucher tossed to the ground after the play. 
but Ronaldis made a move in the backfield, might have got back to the line of scrimmage. I, I was going to say, Donnie, um, before all that happened, that it's now we can tell our viewers that you and I will be back November 6th because the Gales have guaranteed themselves a home quarterfinal game. And the time on OUA TV, you'll have to look at gogalesgo.com to find out the precise time, and that'll be in three weeks' time. Second and 19. Ronaldo standing at a seven, hands the ball off. Nope, play action fake, flips it out near side, and then it's well shy of Mullally, his intended receiver on the play, and it's going to bring on the Ravens to potentially punt or potentially give up what would be their third safety here of this afternoon's action. Fourth safety, thank you, Bill. So Plouffe has punted already this afternoon. He's done a pretty good job. I've been impressed with. Well, uh, he, he did go over, I think it was 4,000 yards yeah, with career punting, one. which isn't necessarily always no. a record you want to have. <laughs> no, but. So he's averaged 41.7 yards on seven punts here this it afternoon. Is, it is bragging rights when the, all the punters get together, I guess, and have a few drinks. Of the soft kind, of course. Of course. And this time he's going to dance outside out the back of the end zone. That'll make the score 45 to nothing. 205 to go here in the fourth quarter. And really, Donnie, people will look at this score that didn't watch this game and say, Wow, that's Queens. And Queens, let's not kid ourselves. Queens played a dominating game today. But really this thing turned on its head from the with 157 left in the first half when the Gales got those three straight turnovers. So, you know, when we start to take a look at player of the game, I, I would almost like to go maybe players of the game. And we talked about the job of the this? defense. <laughs> you always and say that this. This year, today, you talked about those three turnovers at the end of the first half. But let's talk about the job this defense has done throughout the whole season. They've averaged giving up eight points a game. And it looks like that's even going to go down after this week. Yeah, but we could have given them players of the game every week. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I think you're exactly... This defense allows the Gales to sort of play rope-a-dope football. They can bide their time. As long as the offense doesn't make mistakes, at some point the defense is going to give the offense, put them in a position, and then the offense will take advantage. Um, it's a great way that the Gales play, and this defense, you're exactly right, keys this, this team and today, they made two of those turnovers were by the defense. The other one was on special teams, but they came with 157 left. They resulted in 13 points. I'm sure Steve Snyder will say this week in his press conference in his uh, conference with the media that would have liked to see 21 points there. But it really, I think, put Carlton on their heels coming into the second half. And then again, the Gales just bided their time and produce more mistakes and next thing you know you've got a blowout but as far as player of the game goes i mean you've got miller melanson who's got two picks bedard made a nice pick carabin had a nice interception you're probably right that you could give it to any one of the 12 players and on the other side of the ball let's credit the job that this Gales offensive line oh. have done. You know, when the Gales really took control in that second quarter, the time that James Keenan had to sit back and read a book and go through his yep. second, third, fourth reads. And really, when you break it, when you break down this Gales team so far, they're winning the battles in the trenches. And uh, they're just, they're dictating the flow of the game that way. Really, Guelph last Friday night was able to control that line of scrimmage and as a result made it a very close game. Burton Shaw with the carry on first down here. It's tripped in the backfield. Might it, the he referee is down. saying he went to a knee. However, it appears to everybody else that he had 
picked up close to first down yardage, but they're going to give him maybe a half yard gain on first. Actually, no, he's right wow, back at the Wow, let's watch the replay line. here. Oh, you know what? That's a great call by our official, Chris Venter. On that replay, you could see Connor's knee hit the turf. So second and 10. Clock now moving under two minutes left to go here in the game. A handoff to Burtonshaw again on second down, and he plows up field, gets up close to about the 40-yard line. Is going to bring on Libertor to punt the ball away once again. So we knock the officials most of the time, but that was great positioning by our referee, Chris Venter, and he was able to see it, and to all of us, it didn't look like his knee touched, but it did. And the Gales punting again. Let's not take away from the Gales punter, who's done a great job today as well. Libertor with a 37-yard average here this afternoon. A nice high punt, and again goes right out to the sideline. And noticing that time, it's Jonathan Edwards in in place of Ferdinand well, to I return think, the punts. I think Ferdinand's confidence is, sh is shot right now. Um, he was really down on himself after dropping that last punt. So I think he just, same with Van Conan, just give him, forget about today if you can. And get re they've got a bye week, and then you get ready for the crosstown rivals, and then the playoffs. Because they have clinched a playoff spot, I believe. If I look I at the I think standings. they had to win with the York loss. So even though York lost, theoretically York could still get could still get into a tie with them at the end of the season. Ronaldus on first down has a complete nice reception. A nice pass completion well, going to a second read that time, Kerwin Geese. And his second read, because his first read was going to get picked, and he had the presence of mind Sorry, as you look at the replay. Paul, Sorry, Donnie. It's uh, Van Conan actually back in there, a quarterback. Oh. And that's a – you know what? That's even better for Van Conan because that's a confident, confident – and you could see number 12, Mulali, look at his quarterback because he was the one that was supposed to get the pass – and he didn't throw it to him, and he made the right read and a strong throw. So into the Gales, into the field at the 51-yard line. Zips it here, trying to get a complete near side to Kasim Ferdinand. And, and that falling was, incomplete. It was a little, it was a tough catch for Ferdinand, but you got to help out your quarterback sometimes. And again, the Ravens will be much better if the Gales see them a third time. And They've got time to iron out these mistakes. Second and 10. Now under a minute to go here in the fourth quarter. Van Conant quickly flips it outside on the hitch pass. And trying to get downfield is Kalik Johnson and unable to get away from the Gales defenders, Gabe Boucher up there. And the officials miss out. another hold. Sorry, Donnie. I think it was Noah Gross who had his jersey tugged again but uh, they just the defense swarms they don't no one's complaining about it it was actually Aiden Simpson who was held they don't complain they just keep swarming and they make the play and now it's third and long two yards on that game third and eight they have to get to the Gales 41 yard line Van Conant looking near side, now forced to scramble and look far side, throws it downfield and it's incomplete on the play. Coming up with the coverage that time for the Gales. Was Keegan Vanek and it's third down, uh, sorry, they turn it over on third down and the Gales will now have it to run the clock out from their 49 yard line. And in victory formation, actually, we see Rasheed Tucker coming back into the backfield here. And in five, they'll play again in five days up in Ottawa against the GGs, and then they will have a precious couple of weeks off until November 6th when they host a playoff game for the first time in a few years. So clock now winding down under 20 seconds.
And that game in Ottawa it will be on OUA TV. It'll be a 6 p.m. start. And how about Steve Snyder? Not long in this job, but he's got a 5-0 and team sitting atop the OUA East. So the final score here this afternoon, 45 to nothing. The Gales victorious. They moved to 5-0, and and it's the first time they moved to 5-0 and on the year, going all the way back to celebrating one of the Hall of Fame inductees, the 2009 Vanier Cup champions, who went 5-0, and eventually 7-1 and before moving on to the Vanier Cup. Bill, final thoughts before we wrap things up here this afternoon. Just a very clinical victory by the Gales. They, the defense played its usual brilliant way. The offense waited, bided it its time, got going, started to drive the ball on the Carlton defense, wear them down, and just kept finding ways to put points on the board. and now have clinched home field at least until November 20th as long as they can win. So the final score here this afternoon from Richardson Stadium, Queens moves to 5-0, and oh, and as Bill said, clinches a playoff, not only clinches the playoff spot, but also clinches first place and home field advantage. The Ravens hoping after their bye next week when they finish up against Ottawa that they will be able to secure a playoff spot. For Bill Nicholas, my name's Don Lewis. You've been watching Gales Football on OUA TV.